everybody. Welcome to episode six of the 13 o'clock podcast. Today's show, we have kind of an interesting theme. Bizarre Brothers. Yeah. The Weirdo Bro Show. Yeah, sometimes, you know, one weirdo isn't enough. You're going to have two weirdos. Two weirdos. We've <laughs> got two cases of two weirdos. Yeah. Two. Which have kind of similarities, but I'll, you know. Well, we'll just, we'll get to them when we get to them. We'll get to it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what did we decide? The first one, we're going to talk about the... Uh, Let's the talk about the Call Your Brothers. All right. Right. So, those of you who are from New York or know anything about New York history have probably heard of the Collier Brothers. They're actually pretty famous. Yeah. Um, this was from the 1940s. They actually, I think they actually died in the 1940s. They were born in 1881, one of them was. They weren't yeah. twins. It was one of them was like four years older. Yeah. And um, their names were Homer and Langley. Yeah. And they actually only got famous. I mean, they were fairly normal up until they got a little older. Well, their dad was a doctor, wasn't he? Yeah, a gynecologist. Gynecologist. Which kind of ties into our other case, which is right. kind of weird. Right. This is a story. I don't know if you guys are, uh, ever watched the show Hoarders, all right? We have a love, a fascination with this show. With, 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 yeah, with the oddities that are hoarders. Well, these guys were probably two of the of the strangest hoarders of all times, and probably two of the best hoarders. Yeah, say. in the sense that yeah, like well, they do, knew how to hoard. This is how yeah, this is how hardcore their hoarding was. To this day, evidently, according to the internet, yeah, in New York City and along the East Coast, firefighting lingo. Uh-huh. If they go to a hoarder's house, it's still called a Collier's Mansion. Collier's this Mansion. is a Collier's Mansion situation, they will say, in yeah. firefighting school. And that's, you know, if any of you fire, firefighters yeah. let me know, but that's yeah. what I read online. Now, this case is well documented. And on, on our YouTube show version of this one, you can go and you can see photos. We got lots of photos. Yeah, there's lots of photos. Of this thing. And this is not normal hoarding. This no. is No. This is next level. Yeah, they they filled an entire what was it four story building, a four story brownstone. Right, yes. right, <clears throat> up to the roof. They yes. couldn't get in there. Yes. Why don't you tell the story, Jenny? How this start? Well, basically, like I said, they were both fairly, um, fairly normal. I want to say there were some kind of weird things about them. Uh, one was older than the other. I believe Homer was the older one. I want to say, uh, yeah, yeah, Homer was the older one. Now. They came from a very prominent and old New York family. Yeah, they had money. I mean, apparently um, their family, going back generations, had come on the second boat, like after the Mayflower. Yeah, these were actually like blue blood snobs. Yeah. 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 So they were like, uh, you know, upper class twit kind of people. So their dad was a a gynecologist, as Mm -hmm. I said. I think their mom was an opera singer or something like that. And uh, I forgot what their what what, what were their uh, jobs? Their well, actually, um, one of them, Homer, was a. Well, they both went to. I both did. They both go to Columbia. I want to say, it was it was a pretty you know. They were professionals. Columbia, they... yeah, they went to Columbia, and uh, yeah, they were professionals. Yeah. Uh, Homer had his degree in Admiralty Law. He was a lawyer. That's right. One was and a uh, Langley studied uh, chemistry and engineering, That's and right. he was also a concert pianist. Yeah. Who performed at Carnegie Hall. These guys weren't dummies. No. Right. Um, and like I said, their family was quite wealthy. Right. And they, they inherited their mom's mansion, which was a brownstone. Yeah. What ended up happening right. was, yeah, it was a huge four-story brownstone. And it was in uh, Harlem. Right. Which actually was a upper-class area at the time. It was a rich, area it was a rich time, neighborhood at the in time. In the early 1900s. Um, so what happened, they lived there. Now, here's the weird thing about the two brothers, though. They never married, no. and they always lived with their parents, even when they were much older. Okay, yeah, that may have not have been all that un- unusual. Yeah, for maybe an it's weirder back in the early nineteen yeah. hundreds. I think it was. I think it was. I think they mostly lived on family estates until you got married. Yeah, then you about didn't maybe you? rich people. That's how they were. I think. Yeah, but like I said, now their dad was also known as something of an eccentric, not mm. too crazy, but he would do kind of wacky things. Um, so maybe genetic, I don't know. But, um, so their dad left, I think at one point and then died later. And then the mom died, I think in the twenties. Yeah. 19. Well, the dad died in 1923 and the mom died in 1929. Yeah. The exact dates don't really matter. It's just that they were left there in the house by themselves. Yeah. So they had lived with their parents all their lives. 
1929, their mother died, left them the house and everything in it. All of their dad's medical stuff, everything. Right. Now, for four years after the mother died, mm. the brothers were normal. They still had jobs. They still went out. They still socialized. Yeah, they had social lives, yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't like it was immediate, oh, our mom died no. and they went into a depression or anything like that. What actually caused it was Homer... Um, started to go blind. Started to go blind. Right. And he eventually ended up losing his eyesight, which, you know, kind of sucks. And then, so after he went blind, Langley... Was he here in vape? Quit his job. Yeah, yeah there he goes. I'm going to have to put the vaping picture in yeah. the YouTube. <laughs> you need to take another vaping picture. I'm sick of using yeah. the same one. Okay. But, um, so yeah, Homer went blind. Langley quit his job. To, he had to stay there and take care to of his To take brother. care of his brother. Right. Now, because at the time, Harlem was beginning to... Become the Harlem you know. Diversify, yeah, right. let's say. Well, the, 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 and the crime started going up. Like, it wasn't, you know, it was not becoming an upper class area anymore. So the, Well, the Great Depression hit. Yeah. The Great Depression hit and all the uh, all the wealthy people moved away. Right. And, and they were building a subway right. stop right around there. And they were building all these, like, right. low-cost apartment buildings and whatnot. And uh, so, so the old guys started. I mean, they weren't super old. They at weren't that, time. that old. Not not 50s, yet. Fifties, I think. Yeah, I think they were in their. They 50s. started wigging out. They thought uh, they thought that uh, all the new people that moved into the uh, to the apartment or into the, into the area were out to get them. Yeah, so they, they started start, developing paranoia. Yeah. And evidently, they did kind of cross crowds because they were like the last of the rich people in the area. Yeah, and uh, you know, this is Depression era. And they would sit there and they'd watch them. The teenagers would watch them trying to get ready yeah, to steal some stuff. It's kind of ironic because yeah. they kind of developed kind of an unfounded paranoia at first that like everyone was out to get them and all this other stuff. But it became but then, real. But then because yeah. they acted so weird, everyone else in the neighborhood was curious about them. Yeah, they wanted to know what's going on. So, you know, kids would come and like try and look in the windows or They'd like throw windows. rocks through the windows and right. stuff like that. Also, rumors circulated. Now... Now, later on, like like I said, Homer went blind, and he also got rheumatism later and became paralyzed. paralyzed. Right. So he could no longer move, and Langley had to take care of everything for him. Yeah. Um. So, so they both went in the house. Now, Langley still went out. Yeah, but, th 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 but th th this is let, let's get down to the crooks of the matter. What happened was is they decided to build a fortress of junk, and this is what they were going to protect themselves with to keep people from breaking into their... Uh, brownstone apartment. They uh, the one that could see. What was his name? Langley was the one. Langley would see. go out there and just get any piece of, of furniture or books or anything and bring it into the brownstone and and, and uh, he started to make defensive barriers, booby traps, booby traps and Basically. barriers. Right. Yeah. It ended up the entire building, all four stories of that building, was filled to the roof on each floor. And the only way to get around was to go through a, tr a a system of tunnels that was made through the junk. Tunnels and booby traps. And when they would enter into the house, he would pull junk in behind him to make walls and uh, things we'd call, I guess you'd call rock drops. In other words, falling traps of debris. Right. Uh, wasn't there something electrical too? There was all kinds of weird stuff. Well, that they had. I'm not sure about that because at some point, I mean, like I said, after Homer also became paralyzed, um, Langley would only leave the house after dark, and he looked like a bum. Like yeah. everyone that lived around there, that oh, yeah. like all the stores he went into, they said he was a nice man, but that he was obviously crazy and he looked like a bum. Yeah. And um, but he would sometimes walk like way over to some other neighborhood just to get a loaf of bread just or something a, like he'd that. He'd walk miles to get a loaf of bread that was a little bit cheaper than the other places. Yeah. Stuff, you know, stuff like brother. that. And yeah. they lived in little nests inside the, the house. Yeah. That was basically like the only areas. Because, I mean, Homer couldn't move. Well. I mean, I Langley could they, pick him up they and stop, around, I guess, but. I think the trouble started when they stopped uh, paying the, the electricity and the telephone. Yeah. And, and the, the gas. And the gas. And then they stopped paying for their mortgage. Yes. And the police came when the, to repossess. Well, actually, what ended up happening first? What, what happened ended up first? happening yeah. first was they had actually bought the building across the street 
Okay. Before they went nuts. Okay. They were going to turn it into an apartment building. All right. But they first stopped paying the mortgage on that, I think. All right. So the police re- came to repossess it, you know, went mm-hmm. to repossess it. And that's when they started arguing with the police and all this other mm-hmm. shit. And also, I think I also heard that a neighbor that was once like looking in their windows or something like that, mm-hmm. they bought that house. To get like rid of to neighbor. get rid of the neighbor. Right. These guys weren't poor. They were. They were yeah, wealthy. which is weird. Now, yeah. because they weren't poor, I mean, obviously they came from a very prominent mm-hmm. family. So rumors circulated in the neighborhood that they were just sitting on big piles of cash in there. Yeah. So, they thought so actually, treasure. people did try to break in. Yeah. So they weren't wrong. No, they were trying to get in there because they thought there was treasure. Because they thought there was stuff in there. Right. Money or whatever. Now, like we said, they did have money, and like I said, after you know, after they died, they found out, but. Um, but you know, they weren't sitting on piles of cash in there. It was all in the back. Mm -hmm. But the rumors were that they were, they were sitting on piles of cash because they didn't want to put it in the bank because they were paranoid about banks, but it actually was in the bank. Now, when they would, when when they came down to try to repossess the place, they actually tried to bash through the front doors, but of course they just bashed into a wall of stacked stuff. Books. What was it? Books, bottles, uh... Pretty much, Most, there was a whole car chassis in there. Whole car chassis, yeah. Fourteen pianos. Fourteen pianos. They had, there was, I think it was over what a hundred tons. One hundred and twenty, between one hundred and twenty and one hundred and forty tons, they ended up taking out. He of took there. a uh, Langley took a Model T, and he had he took it apart and assembled it in the basement and tried to make an electrical generator out of it. Yeah, because and, like we said, their electricity had been yeah, off. Because they'd been off, but they tried to repossess the place, and they thought that the the other brother had died. Well, no, Remember? what they came in, they actually bashed their way in and they were going to repossess it because the brothers hadn't paid the mortgage. They don't, they weren't paying property taxes and they argued that they shouldn't have to Okay. because, well, we don't make any money, so we shouldn't have to pay have taxes, taxes. Okay. even though they had shitloads of money. Right. Because when the cops busted in there the first time and threw some of their shit out on the street and said, Hey, mm. you guys haven't, you know, paid the mortgage. We're kicking you out. Langley wrote a check for the whole remaining amount. Yeah, so they paid it off of in the one mortgage. Go, so. so they paid it off in one go, and that was actually I'm not sure. I have to look and see what the. I mean, it was a lot of money. It for was back then. It was like over a million. Well, it was no, it was seventy five hundred dollars, which was I thought in adjusted in adjusted uh, terms, it was like close to a million dollars. No, this was just was what was remaining. Okay. This was remaining on the mortgage. Oh, sixty seven hundred dollars. Okay. So the equivalent of that is about a hundred grand. About a hundred grand. Okay. So he basically wrote a check for a hundred grand and said, right. "Get the fuck out." Right. And uh, so they did for a while. No, they demanded to see his brother. Remember, and the cop had to climb all the way down through the tunnels. It took him a half hour. Yeah. To get there. Yeah. To see. To, to, he wanted to confirm that the other brother was alive. Right. Because Langley was very protective of Homer. Right. Just, and and remember, he was totally paralyzed. He said, "In in yeah." Uh, Tell us how that went down. When, when the well, car- he just kind of sat in this nest. Yeah. And actually, I don't, I don't actually know if he would let the cops because he would not let anyone see him. No, the cops saw him. Remember, remember he? Uh, uh, I read that the cops actually saw him, and he was sitting upright with wild hair and was filthy. And oh looked, yeah. Looked up. Uh, Poorly nourished, like malnourished. Yeah. And he spoke in perfect English that he was fine and that, uh, I don't remember exactly what he told him, but uh, uh, had had to do with settling the mortgage and that he, that he wasn't, that he was blind and that he was paralyzed and that he was fine and he was happy where he was. Yeah. So they, no crime was being committed, so they had to leave so him there. So they couldn't, right, they couldn't do anything about and it. And then went on for years later. Everybody wondering what the hell was going on inside that mountain of junk that they were in. Yeah. Because there was pretty much, like I said, they, they didn't, no electricity, no gas, no phone, no nothing. All they, they had a crystal radio that Langley built. That was yeah. about it. But they didn't talk to anyone and they, you know. You couldn't stand up anywhere in anything. No. You had to crawl through tunnels and Langley would close, I guess you could say like little, close little trap doors behind him with his foot and pull things in. That way yeah. there was no way into the brownstone. If you opened any doors or if you opened any windows or broke anything, it was just... You'd have to go through 30 or 40 feet 
Yeah. Of junk. And even the windows, they said that even the windows in the basement that were broken, like his yeah. kids had broken them, they still had iron bars over them. Yeah. So you still couldn't get in that way. And it wasn't like you'd see in hoarders where it just random piles of shit. This is all neatly stacked and bundled pieces of junk. They're well, like that's, making big bricks. That's another pianos. sad thing too, is that a lot of the stuff, like obviously not a lot of the stuff, but it, a good percentage of the stuff was newspapers. And Langley was saving them because he thought that Homer was going to get his sight back. And he would want to read all these papers. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, and and it's this is what and this is actually kind of sad. This made me kind yeah. of sad because obviously these two were nuts. Yeah. Now, Langley thought that he could cure Homer's blindness. Yeah. By giving him a special diet. Yeah, it was oranges, wasn't it? A hundred oranges a week. Yeah. Black bread and peanut butter. Yeah. That was the diet, and he said that he didn't want to take. Homer to the doctor because their dad had been a doctor and they knew all about medicine and they did not trust doctors. They thought, well, they're going to cut Homer's optic nerve and then he'll never get his sight back. Yeah, why would they? Why did they think that they would cut the optic nerve? I'm not entirely sure why they thought was, that. Was there something that they did back in the 30s and the 40s about cutting people's optic nerves? I don't know. Because that's the thing. All, all Langley said, because Langley actually was interviewed by reporters like for mm. a few times. And, um... He said, we know all about medicine because our dad was a doctor yeah. and I'm just going to treat him myself and it'll all be fine. And his vision will come back yeah. and he will want to read all these newspapers. And there was like decades of newspapers. Yeah. And that, that actually made me kind of sad. How could you read decades worth of newspapers? And, right. You know, and why would he even want to? Yeah. And spoiler alert, he never did get his sight back. No. No. Of course not. No. Yeah. This might as well jump to what happened. He did show up. He did show up to court a couple of times. And he showed up, remember, in 1800s clothes. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and he was like he was all shabby looking. Yeah. But he was very articulate and he spoke right. very you know, yeah. he spoke like an upper class, you know, right. man would have. What ended up happening, uh, as you can probably predict, is that a an anonymous tipster called the police and said that they there was a dead body smell yeah, coming, coming from the house. Now the police were obviously pretty used to going out there by now mm-hmm. because there were always kind of complaints and other kind of shit they were always doing because another thing we didn't mention is Langley was forever making complaints about neighbors and about kids hanging around his house and people coming around his house. I think one time when the cops came, there was like a thousand people in the street, like Mm. curious, like wanting to get a glimpse inside because they heard all these weird things about them because they were so eccentric. So, so they called about a dead body smell. So the cops try to bust into the house and obviously you know, they couldn't really get in there. It's just a wall of junk. Yeah. So basically they had to start just pulling shit out of the house and they had throwing it into the, the road. They had to cut in through the roof. Yeah. On the very top floor, on the fourth floor. Remember they, they, uh, they there, there's photos, photographs of them with fire axes. Yeah. Cutting I'm not sure if that was the first time because they went in twice. Went in twice. Because what ended up happening was now, I think the first time, so they went in and they found Homer in his nest yeah. And he was dead. And he had been dead. No. no. He had only been dead for 10 hours. 10 hours. Okay. He was dead for 10 hours. He was sitting upright in his nest yeah. with his head on his knees. Mm-hmm. They thought he had died of cardiac arrest and possibly starvation. Yeah. Okay. So they couldn't find Langley anywhere. Yeah. They thought so he they, had run. They thought yeah. that he had, that the, you know, the brother had yeah. died and he had taken off. So they actually, uh, they had a cop there at the house after they took Homer's body out. Mm-hmm. They had a cop there at the house to wait for Langley to come home, mm-hmm. and he never came home. Yeah. So they thought, well, he must have just taken off. Right. And, and also... The one, they thought he was the one that called the cops. Yeah, about but, the, but it the wasn't, though. No. I mean, they don't know exactly who it was because they gave a pseudonym. I think he was a burglar. It might have been, yeah. honestly. That's what I think. But, um, or it might have just been a, a neighbor that didn't want... They said they couldn't smell anything. We'll see. Well, I'll get to that. Yeah. All right. So it wasn't until later. So because they thought that Langley had run, Mm -hmm. they did a manhunt. Mm -hmm. Nine states. Mm -hmm. Because there were, you know, obviously there were people saying, hey, I saw him here and hey, I saw Mm -hmm. him there. So they never found him. And then Homer's funeral came and Langley didn't show up. 
And then they started to get suspicious. And actually, at this point, they were thinking, you know, the house was unsafe. Yeah. So they thought, well, maybe we should look in the house. Maybe Langley's dead in there. Maybe that's what the dead body smell was. They had to empty the damn house. And, and they was- had to empty the whole house. For, like I said, yeah. it's a four-story brownstone. I have pictures of it. It's gone now. But, yeah. um, you know, there's pictures of it. It's a huge, huge house. A huge mansion, pretty much. Yeah, it was a mansion. And a- so they go in there. And they start just pulling shit out, like 19 tons of stuff just on the ground floor. They were throwing stuff out the windows. They were just throwing stuff out the windows, just yeah. throwing it all in the street. There's there's pictures, there are pictures from the time, for, this was 1947, I believe, pictures from the time of just, just garbage and junk. Yeah, it was supposed to be a uh, carnival-like atmosphere. Because everybody well, yeah, was everybody stuff. came, and I think yeah. I actually have found yeah. a picture of like just all this huge crowd like yeah. around the house watching them throw everything out. Yeah. So finally, they it took... Now, this was a week after they took Homer's body out. Yeah. Like I said, Homer, they found immediately. They yeah, just found, found him, him sitting up in sitting his Sitting up in nest. his nest, you know, because yeah, they right. knew where his nest was. Right. So, you know, a week later, like I said, they hadn't found Langley, so they said, well, maybe he's dead in the house. So they start digging all the shit out. And there, I believe, it was some sources say second floor, some say third floor. Mm. But they say they started taking all the shit out and they see a foot. Yeah. And the foot had been partially gnawed by rats. Yeah. And so they start moving the shit, and that obviously Langley. Langley had been dead. And he was there. right near the brother, wasn't he? Ten feet away. Ten feet away. What had happened, and this is this is the saddest part of the that, whole that's, fucking that's, story. That, that's sad when you find the body and you didn't know that the other body was ten feet away. It was ten feet away. It was ten feet away. You couldn't see it because it was down in a tunnel. Langley was crawling through a two-foot tunnel that was booby-trapped. He was bringing food to his brother, they assumed. Yeah. And it collapsed. Crushed him. And crushed him. Yep. And he had been in there, and then his brother obviously starved to death because he couldn't move or see. Starved to death or, or, you know, died of thirst. Or died of thirst, one of those things. So he was in there for a long time, knowing that his dead brother was right next to him in the debris. Here's what, this kind of creeps me out. Like, what if, what if Langley was in the tunnel and then all the shit fell on him? It was like a big suitcase and a bunch of metal bread boxes and like, it was a trap that he had made. made, And he accidentally tripped it. And, uh, and so here's what I'm wondering, like, did it squish him out right? Or... No, they said he suffocated. Oh my God. So that means he, he could probably talk to his brother and go, hey, yeah. bro, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I'm squished. Yeah. Oh, that is so nasty. Yeah. And then the rats ate him. And then the rats ate him. Why oh. his brother was right next to him. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. Pretty bad. It's an awful story. Yeah. And so basically... <sighs> God, poor <laughs> bastards. I'm just, it makes me, I know it was a long time ago, but it's uh, like, oh, it's awful. Yeah, we got a photograph of the of the, of the devoured <sighs> body, too. The body that was eaten by Did the Did you rats. find that? I didn't find yeah, that. Yeah, it's there. I got it. Oh, gross. Got, okay, we'll you're going to have to send me Cops that. sitting there looking in there, <laughs> that eating up body. So, phew. all right. So, uh, so here's the thing. So, obviously, after they, they were both dead, the house was clearly it not, was tr- it was garbage. not fit to live in. It was just been packed with so much debris for so long, just structurally unsound. Structurally they had, unsound. They just had to tear and it down. yeah, so they, like I said, they ended up taking about 100, 120, 130 tons, tons, of, tons, tons of, of shit. stuff <laughs> out debris. of this four story mansion now, there's a that list. had once been there's a list of what was in there there was like seven pianos it was 14 pianos. 14 pianos. it was 14 okay. pianos do you have that list um there's actually there's one on wikipedia it doesn't say everything that was in there but they said a lot of the stuff uh was from their father's medical practice there was okay. a lot of medical you know tools and machines or whatnot it was ridiculous yeah uh baby carriages a doll carriage rusted bicycles old food potato peelers a gun collection glass chandeliers bowling balls camera equipment the folding top of a horse-drawn carriage yeah a car (laughs) like you do a car a sawhorse three dressmaking dummies portraits photos of pinup girls from the early 1900s yeah uh their mother's hope chests it was ridiculous. Yeah, just tons. When you see the photographs, it's oh, just absolutely ridiculous. Pickled human organs in oh, jars. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's Eight live cats. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> At least it wasn't dead cats. I forgot they were cats. I've seen hoarders on TLC. And yeah, they they, they, they dead find cats dead in cats the in there. Remember the one that kept all the dead cats in the refrigerator? Oh, yeah. And, and there was like to, dead cat yeah. juice in cat, the bottom. Uh, oh, oh, that's yeah. like, I know it's like making me kind of nauseous yeah. just talking about. What about the woman that saved all her own feces? 
There was more than one of those, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, the whole bathroom. I'm like, throw- can't you just like throw? Couldn't you just throw it out the window or yeah. something? Like, Ugh. fuck! Why would you just throw it in the corner? Of the Ugh. anyway, ridiculous. So, but another thing they found, like other than all this like junk and garbage, they also found 34 bank passbooks, um, and that had a total of three thousand nineteen forty seven dollars, which is about thirty six grand today. Now. They took all the stuff out of the house. They said 80, 90% of it worthless, junk, yeah. garbage. Um, the items that they did save, uh, they auctioned off $2,000. <laughs> That's it. And, uh, but however, the cumulative estate of the Collier brothers when they died, 1947 money. $91,000. Damn. Over a million bucks wow. in today's money. So they did have money. Yeah. They weren't poor. They could have moved away. They could have moved. Yeah, they just hoarder mentality. Nuts. Crazy. And that's what's the saddest thing about this. And yeah. every time, we say this every time, well, it's one of the things. Every time mm. we watch hoarders on TLC, I look, I know it's a mental illness. Yeah. My grandfather had it, so I'm familiar. But not not as bad as the Collier yeah. brothers. No. At least you could still walk through the house. There was a path. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. But uh, it's weird how like dude hoarders, because there's kind of a difference between actually hoarding is more common in dudes than it is in women. Even though TLC, it's mostly women on the show. They right. usually because I think that's the dudes are too ashamed to be on TV. That's probably TV. why. Yeah. But it's actually more common in men. It's a you know it's a spinoff of OCD. Yeah. It's some similar kind of uh, illness. Every time we watch that show, it's like I see the house and I'm just like, you know what? Burn it down. Start over. Yeah. But <laughs> I know that's not going to help yeah. them. I know it's not going to help them. They'll but just do it again. They'll just do it again. It's like a little Chinese woman. I got too many stuff. Too many. Too much stuff. Too, too much, many stuff. Too many stuff. Too many stuff. Yeah. Probably time for a break. She was so cute though. Probably. All right. So yeah, we can talk a little bit more about this when we get back and then we'll talk about it. So we're going to take a break since we're coming up to the half an hour mark. Yeah. And we will be right back. I would like to take a second and thank Subculture Corsets and Clothing for sponsoring Project I Radio and my show. While listening to my podcast, please take a second and visit their website at www.subculturecorsets.com. They carry a wide selection of corsets, rockabilly, gothic, steampunk, and pinup clothing, shoes, and accessories. Again, their website is subculturecorsets.com, or if you're in the Jacksonville, Florida area, stop by their store in the Avenues Mall. And if you like to save money, use the discount code 13 o'clock when checking out and save 10% off your entire order. By the way, if you're a curvy girl, Subculture did not forget about you. They carry size 4 to 4X, and guys, they have men's clothing and shoes as well. So go shop at subculturecorsets.com now and use the discount code 13 o'clock for a 10% discount. All right, now. Yeah, we were talking about the Colliers. So we're talking about the Collier brothers. Yeah. So after they, di- after they died... <laughs> Since their, you know, since their estate was over a million dollars, so then they had people crawling out of the woodwork saying they were related. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that part. <clears throat> yeah, which, you know, There's as a bunch of people saying that they were distant relatives. Vultures. Yeah. yeah. But um, actually, when it all shook down, uh, the final estate was split between 23 people. Yeah. Because, you know, I guess they figured out who was related to them and who wasn't. Yeah, and they had one woman, and she, she had tried to uh, collect on several estates. Remember her? Yeah, that's I right. Forgot, I forgot who, forgot who it was. Yeah, she oh yeah, right here. Ella related. Davis. Ella her Davis, was. She yeah. was from Pittsburgh, and she said she was their long-lost sister. But she couldn't produce a birth certificate, and they also found out that she had also claimed to be the widow of some other wealthy reclusive dude a few years yeah. ago. So they were like, yeah, we're on to you, baby. She's a literal, literal grave digger. Yeah. yeah. And now, now the, the guy that she, not a the, gold digger, but a grave digger, a grave digger. <laughs> well, yeah. Cause I was going to say that the first guy, the other wealthy recluse, she yeah. said was, was the widow was found murdered uh, in the thirties. Damn. Maybe she did it. I don't know. <laughs> She's probably dead now. It's all right. Yeah. She can't sue. So. <laughs> a long time ago. All these, pe- all these people involved. All in the these story people are dead, dead now. now. Yeah. So the the lasting legacy of these poor guys. I mean, you know, don't I can't, get eaten by rats next to your brother. Don't get, yeah. Don't get squished by your own booby traps. Yeah. And uh, so for a long time, I don't know about now because I'm not from New York, but for a long time, uh, mothers in New York 
if their kids made a mess or something or if their kid's room was a mess. Yeah. It's a regular Collier Brothers in here, they would say. <laughs> and like I said, it's uh, it's also still a firefighting term. That might have been, you know, the nation's first you know, up close and personal uh, examination With of a hoarder. With behavior. Yeah. And I imagine in the 40s... They wouldn't have known. The they wouldn't have known. It wouldn't have been a common what known the deal thing. with that yeah. was. Right. I mean, now they know. Yeah, it's a disorder on the OCD spectrum. Well, the cops are mystified. Yeah. Yeah. They I imagine they it. had probably never seen right or anything to that extent. I mean, because it was so large. Yeah. The house was so large. When you see when you see the photos, it's uh, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable you could put that much stuff in 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 in. In a brownstone. Well, and this is another thing that every time we watch Hoarders I mean, on it would TV, have been solid. It was a solid block. Yeah, it was solid stuff. It was a solid block of stuff. Just solid stuff. Yeah. And every time we watch Hoarders, I always think this one, how do they get all that shit in there and not expect the fucking floor to collapse, which it does sometimes. Two, where are they getting the money to buy all that stuff? These guys, I don't, I mean, yeah, these guys picked stuff out of garbage and they had money, but sometimes like on hoarders, you see kind of these lower middle class kind of people, you know, they're that, dumpster diving. Yeah. With sometimes don't even jobs. And dumpster it's like, diving. well, yeah, but like, what about the ones that like just go and no, I'm going to go on a shopping spree and they go <laughs> and buy all these clothes. I'm like, with what? Yeah. With what? I just like, I don't, God, it's like I feel guilty about going and having to buy like bottle of shampoo. Like, oh my God, that's four dollars. I could have used that for something else. But you know what I mean? It's just like so I can't imagine just like going to a store and just like buying like tons and tons of shit that you don't need. You never need, and they never use it again. They keep it in the bag a lot of times. Yeah, they never even look at it. They probably forget it's in there. Yeah. So what's the next one? What's the next understand. set of brothers? All right. So the next set of brothers, this is kind of related. That's why I wanted to put them on the same thing. There's a gynecologist tie-in and also a weird brother kind of thing. And also a little bit of hoarding at the end. Yeah, I don't know this one. I don't know about this one. So, Okay, so this story, probably a little less known than the Collier brothers. However, uh, if you're a fan of David Cronenberg, he made a movie in 1988 called Dead Ringers. Some of you have probably seen it. And uh, what you may not know is that Dead Ringers was based on two real guys. And the movie is, I mean, as weird as the movie is, you know, if you haven't seen it, Jeremy Irons is in it. He plays twin gynecologists who have this horrible, like, downward spiral of mental illness and drug abuse and end up dying in this creepy, psychosexual kind of weird thing they have going on. And actually, I had thought that the movie was kind of loosely based on two real guys, but no, it's actually pretty close. (laughs) So these guys were uh, the Marcus brothers, Stuart and Cyril. They look like Ted Cruz. They like do. The young Ted Cruz, yeah, both of them. They look like twins. No, the exact Ted class. Cruz is the Zodiac. Killer. Well, Everybody Ted Cruz. No, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz <laughs> looks a little bit like Grandpa Monster. But yeah, the, I can these see guys that. Don't I the, can see that? These guys don't. They look like a young Ted Cruz without the monsterness and without the butthole mouth. Yeah. This is like a good looking Ted Cruz, if you can yeah. imagine that. I don't know if right. you can. But um, so these two were actually twin brothers. Um, Cyril and Stuart, like I said, <clears throat> look like Ted Cruz. Not the Zodiac Killer. Okay. They were also quite prominent citizens. Okay. I believe they went to Cornell. All right. And they were both gynecologists. Okay. And well-regarded gynecologists, obstetricians also. All right. Uh, they worked at, they did fertility treatments and evidently were quote unquote miracle workers okay. with women's fertility. Now they, a lot, uh, a lot of other doctors who knew them said they were kind of dicks. Okay. You know, which a lot of doctors are, I guess, especially hotshot ones. Now do they say why that they were dicks? Uh, they said they were very arrogant. They weren't okay. very good at taking criticism. All right. That type of thing. Dick-like behavior. All right. They um, were, they had kind of a really weird, like, kind of close relationship. They went to the same medical school. Uh, they shared cadavers in anatomy class. And they lived in the same dorm in their college and all this other stuff. Now, I don't think... Well, they were twins. Yeah. Okay. So they had that weird, like, twinny thing going okay. on. Now, I don't think, not like the Collier brothers, I don't think they lived together. Okay. At first. All right. One of them married. Now, the other one I don't think he ever did. 
Now, one of them married and divorced. Okay, well, what but was strange? What, what happened? What was strange about them? Well, evidently, even from uh, before what ended up happening to them, um, there were rumors that they were not right. Uh, there's a book by, called uh, The Professor and the Prostitute by Linda Wolf, and it has mm-hmm. like a lot of kind of weird true crime stories in it. And the woman who wrote the book, actually, uh, Stuart was her doctor, briefly. And she said that she saw him a couple times, and then the third time, the third visit she was there, he started to, like, flip out on her. Like, he, she said he got angry about something, she didn't know what, and she, she started screaming and, like, going into this wacky rage and everything mm-hmm. like that. And finally, I mean, her husband was with her because it was fertility, and, uh, you know, the husband was like, let's get the fuck out of here because this guy is clearly so, off his rocker. So they uh, exhibited, one of them at least exhibited nerd rage. Yes. Okay, well, what happened? What nerd happened? rage. Well, what ended up happening, uh, they were actually, even though, I think one of them got ar- addicted to uh, barbiturates. Okay. And then the other one kind of followed along the same path. Like, right. I don't think the fir- the other one was addicted at first, but then he kind of got in with So they're brother. in their 40s by this time? Yeah. All right. And so they, uh, they started fucking up at work. All right. Um... One of them, I think, like, pulled masks off their patients. They threw shit at them. Right. Um, They just started acting like holy terrors. Acting a fool. Now, just like in the the David Cronenberg movie, one of them, when one of them was indisposed, Mm. the other one would take its place. Because they looked so much alike and no one could tell the difference. Right. Um, That went on for a little while until the you know, the up to then still kind of sane twin also descended into barbiturate okay. addiction and also started acting like a tool okay. all the time. So I think they were both, I'm not sure if they were both fired, but they were both for sure reprimanded. Mm. And uh, what ended up happening to them was, like I said, they kind of went on this downward spiral, blah, what blah, happened? blah. What happened? What is it? Don't brush I'm me. I'm brushing. Dude, we're only at 35 minutes. <laughs> I can talk all I want to. I want to know what happened. Quit rushing me. Quit I want to know me. what happened. Well, if you saw the movie, you probably, you probably kind of know. I didn't see the movie. No, it's a good what, movie. What happened? Movie. Now I'm going to see what happened. What ended up happening, they're not entirely sure mm-hmm. how they died. Well, they know how one of them died, not so much the other one. Mm-hmm. Both of them were found in Cyril's apartment. Okay. One of them was draped over a twin bed in one bedroom. Uh The other one was lying on a twin bed in the other bedroom. All right. The apartment was totally trashed. Okay. Garbage everywhere. All right. Smelled like, I don't know how long they had been in, like, holed up in there. Mm -hmm. But there was just, like, garbage everywhere. Everything was... There was a chair Mm -hmm. in the living room, Mm -hmm. like an armchair, Mm -hmm. that was full of poop. They, they had been pooping in the chair. They'd been shitting in the chair. They had been shitting in you the chair. You got a picture of this? You got photos of this? I don't know. There okay. might be one. I'll have to okay. look. I don't want to see a picture no, of I that. No, I want to see how fucked up this apartment was. <laughs> There's an apartment or a house? It's an apartment. It, okay. was in, it was in Manhattan. All right. And they're both dead. The but One's in one bed. One's in the other bed. They had the apartment trash. They were shitting in the chair. They in were the shitting cha- in the chair. In the chair up front. And when they did the autopsy, mm-hmm. now they thought initially... Oh, barbiturate overdose. Nope. Yeah. Uh, barbiturate withdrawal. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. They said one of them, Cyril, I believe, uh, when they did the toxicology or whatever, it's like they found traces in there. Uh huh. Because apparently they'd been trying to kick the barbiturates and were on uh, Delantin or whatever, or Nembutal or whatever the drug is that they used to get you off of that. But they only found trace amounts of it. Okay. The other one, they didn't find shit. All right. So they're not real sure how the other one died. And now Stuart, I think, was the one that died second. But he had actually, people had seen him leaving the house after Cyril was dead. So they're not really sure. He must have killed Cyril. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. So they're not, I don't know if anyone ever actually really suggested that, but obviously Cyril died first from the autopsy. He didn't tell anybody. And he didn't tell anybody. 
And he left the house to go run an errand or something. And then he went back to this house that was like stinking with trash and poop and everything. How, how rotten was Cyril when they found him? Not very. I don't think they, so they had died been around in the, the same time. Yeah, it, I don't think it was that far apart. Okay. So they don't know if it was like murder or if it was like a suicide pact. Probably suicide. One maybe died, the other one killed himself. Yeah, because maybe. And um, maybe he killed one. Maybe he killed the his twin, and then he killed himself. Yeah, something like that. Or the twin died on his own from withdrawal. Because apparently, like I said, I don't know. I'm not a barbiturate addict, yeah. but apparently, trying to withdraw from barbiturates is like worse than the addiction. Yeah, is it? Like that'll mm. kill you. Mm. So they don't know if Cyril just died of that, and then Stuart couldn't live without the brother. Right. Although, like, why? Why was he like wandering? Around? I don't know. I don't know why he was wandering around the street and didn't tell anybody that he was dead. But um. You yeah. know, all that kind of shit. You think it might be time for a break? Yeah, we can take, because uh, now we're doing two breaks. Sorry, yeah. you guys. Yeah, I got to do two breaks. And the second break is, this is my, self in, my self-indulgent my self break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to break. Okay, so we're going to break for another few seconds, and then we will be back. There are terrors, real and imaginary, and I write about them all. Paranormal nonfiction, horror fiction, the Rochdale House Poltergeist, of Fire and the Whispers, Mammoth Mountain Poltergeist, the Associated Hopeful Monsters, Monsters, Red Menace, the, the Five Tenebrous Bellwether. Go to www.jennyashford.com or search Amazon for the Jenny Ashford author page. All right, we're back. Mm-hmm. So. Hoarders and weird brothers. Yeah, weird hoarder brothers. I don't know. I just think that was probably uh, um, one died and the other one committed suicide. That's what I think happened. I don't think it, I don't think there was a murder. If there's no sign of murder, then it probably was. Probably not. One they died, think maybe it was like a suicide. Like I said, the one saw that the other one was dead. Now, and that's how Cronenberg played it in mm-hmm. his movie. Like one of them died mm-hmm. of a overdose, and then the other one, <laughs> the other one. Killed himself with one of the weird gynecological tools they had invented <laughs> to work on mutant women because it's Cronenberg. I'd like to, I'd like to see that apartment. Was there anything unusual that uh, you know about the apartment other, other than other, other than it just it being totally filthy? garbage yeah. and trash? And here's here's something that bothers me about this case and about the Collier brothers case. These guys were not poor. They were yeah. not indigent. They were not. They had a bunch of money. They had a bunch of money. They had jobs. They didn't care, though. They They were respected. They'd shit in a chair in a heartbeat. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, no, it's like, it's like, think of all the people whose lives are like super shitty or who don't have much money or who are like trying to, who have to work three jobs and they're not like, and it's like, you don't see them doing that kind of stuff. What would make, what would flip that switch in your brain? Not to go a, from not giving a shit, I guess. I guess to go from like I'm a successful doctor, I have money, blah blah blah. I'm shitting in a chair. Well, you just kind of, I guess you just kind of take it for granted when when you have when when you're a doctor, you have all that money. You just go, well, it's normal and it's not making me happy, so fuck it. I'm gonna shit in a chair, <laughs> <laughs> like you do, like you do. Shit in a chair when right now. I'm mad. I'm gonna go shit in a chair. <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell you. I can't tell you what goes through these people's minds. I mean, they got to be mentally ill. I mean, the Collier brothers clearly. And then you have two two brothers. They're both going crazy, and they're already twins. So I'd imagine the crazy can get pretty crazy. Yeah, because they're egging each other on. Right. Yeah. And twins are so similar, like that. There's got to be some kind of weird, like synergy going on with kind of like, hey, I'm nuts. You're nuts. I guess just went fuck the. They just said, you know, fuck the world. Fuck it. Yeah. Give me that chair. I'm gonna shit it. (laughs) <laughs> we can't get past that. Yeah. We can't get past it. I want to see a photo. I want to see how bad it is. Just like, That's well, the woman that wrote that book that I mentioned before yeah. that had been his patient briefly, she said that when she was researching the book, she uh-huh. went to talk to the cop that investigated uh-huh. the case. And she said uh-huh. that the cop had a blow up uh-huh. of the shit chair, yeah. like on the back of the door. <laughs> Like, because they thought it was funny, they I guess. Because they're like, look at these fucking doctors, man, <laughs> shitting in a chair. I'm going to blow up this picture. I have a picture well, of an armchair full of shit did, on the back of my office door. I wonder if they sat in the shit to take a shit. Well, you would have to because it was more than one shit. Damn. 
That's nasty. It was more than one shit. They didn't throw their ass over the over the armchair. Or, or, oh, over maybe. The arm, oh, maybe. yeah. Maybe they threw their ass. You're over the thinking arm. a lot about this. I'm thinking about how do you shit <laughs> in the chair? Maybe nasty. they did, maybe they didn't That's actually nasty. sit in the chair. They just yeah. hung their ass over the arm. I didn't even think Man. of that. I'm not. I'm not. Why not sh- just use the toilet? I'm not a chair. Why not just expert. use the toilet? That's what I mean. They got okay. a toilet in there, right? Yeah. So that was another thing. That was another thing. And the toilet now, was, toilet was probably spotless, unflushed. Probably. <laughs> well, because what Blue happened? Blue water in it and everything. <laughs> Tiny bowl man, you know. Well, see, the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, this is the thing is about I know it's so gross. So it's, sorry, we went in such yeah. a gross direction. Well, I'm get about to get grosser because, like I said, that show we saw on Hoarders, that big fat woman that was just throwing bags of shit in the in the bathroom. In the bathroom. Now, she was not flushing the toilet because there the was toilet no was broken and there yeah. was no water. The water had been turned off because yeah. she had to pay. That's why I brought this up. Right. I bet you that water was blue and sparkly. That's what I mean. and, yeah. They had a perfectly good bathroom. And I'm yeah. sure it was right there. It was a Manhattan yeah. apartment. It was probably as big as a fucking closet, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So I it's like know. the bathroom's right there. You just poop in a chair. I don't understand. Ridiculous. But, you know, hoarding, man. I don't know. So what happened with the case? Did they did they ever find out how they died? or did They, ever figure they out? still don't know. Like I said, they think the first one that died was probably barbiturate withdrawal. Yeah. Second one, they don't know. They really? Don't know. They said maybe it was that, but the toxicology didn't show anything of that nature. So no one, no one was accused of anything. No charges were filed. Not then. no, not as far as I know. That's what kind of makes it mystifying. It's like, what did yeah. he fucking die of a broken heart? I don't know. Or something, <laughs> just because his beloved dickhead brother was I dead. Know. Plus, I don't know. They everyone said they were dickheads. I'm just saying. Just yeah, kind of weird. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I, but I, I ugh, hoarding, man. I don't know hoarding. Yeah. I can't get past that either. Because like I said... It frustrates me. It, it's very frustrating. And like I said, I had... I had he's dead now. Mm-hmm. But I had a relative mm-hmm. who was a hoarder. And a similar kind of thing happened. He had... When um, his wife left him in the mm-hmm. 70s, up to then, he had a big house. Big, like yeah. really cool, spooky house. And when his wife left him in the 70s, mm-hmm. he... Went and he was kind of the same as the Collier brothers. He was kind of one of those weird genius who was inventing stuff and yeah. he had all these patents and stuff. He was really, really smart. He taught me to play chess when I was little. And then after she left, the house just started accumulating. Yeah. And it was a lot of the same stuff that the Colliers could guns, cameras, that kind of stuff. Well, these, do- these doctors probably weren't hoarders though. They were just went nuts. They were shitting. In they the just head. went nuts. Yeah. yeah. It, it looked shitting, like a hoarder situation chair. when they found them. Just because they had been in there for a while, so I guess. So there was stuff in there. Yeah, and they weren't throwing anything away. They just weren't it was mostly anything. garbage. They were probably in there dying. And poop. They probably just wanted to die, I guess. Yeah, they and they weren't up. very old. They weren't very old. They probably just gave up. But, uh, I don't know, for some reason it's like, it's kind of sad. It's also, like I said, I uh, I don't know, I find it sad. Every time, yeah. we, every time we watch Hoarders, I just can't, I get really impatient. They're like, just <laughs> clean it up, clean it up. <laughs> and I hate cleaning. I know. But I never, I'm not going to get it let it go like that. I'm not going to get it let it go like that. Like I said, I had a family member that was a hoarder and it was, he just had a fucking path through the house yeah. and whatnot. I, but, pretty, uh, I think that's pretty much all we can really say about this and we can go ahead and wrap it up. Okay. We that's did, we did the two breaks already, right? Yep. I don't even remember. That's yeah, how, two that's how like fucking freaked out I am by the shit they chair. Went. We're still th- that's yeah. what I'm going to use as the as the picture for this episode. It's pretty to bad. Of poop. Pretty bad. I won't really. I swear. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I swear I won't. Okay. Uh. So yeah, we're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, uh, we'll wrap it up. There's not much more we can say about that. But, yeah, just weirdos. But uh, weird you know, if you're, if you're on the po- if you're on the podcast and you didn't see the photos that we posted, maybe you can go check out the call your brother's photos. They're tr- just a trip. Yeah, there were a bunch of them. They yeah. took a shit ton of photos back. And there's actually still... Um, the cops took a bunch of if photos. If you Google it, there's actually a lot of uh, newspaper articles from 1947 when they found yeah. their bodies and stuff that, that you can read on. Yeah, it is very it's creepy. creepy. There. Hopefully we can find some photos of the other one. <clears throat> yeah, there's a few, not very many, but I'm going to look for some more okay. for the video. All right. All right, so um, hopefully you liked this episode six. And if you like the show, please subscribe. I will put up a little clicky button on the YouTube show. And also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and yeah. all of that, you know. Yeah, we're going to have another guest soon, too. We're going to bring another guest on. Yeah, we're going to have. We'll just, it'll be a secret, though. That last guest we had on Angry Gay Pope was real good when we had uh, 
we had a lot of his fans. That was a, a fun show, his, wasn't yeah. it? That was a fun show. Yeah. We're going to have to do another so one. Have like a good that. Guest. We're going to have a good, good, good guest uh, this coming month. All right. Already. And that'll do it for 13 o'clock. See you next week. <laughs>